Okay guys, I'm going to show you guys how to create your dim sheets or dimension sheets. By now you have already created a title block. If for some reason you have not done this, you want to go back into the pickup box and read the tutorial labeled creating a title block with the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do so. So, go back into Inventor. Uh, of course, I'm using Inventor. I've opened up a new file, a drawing file. Again, all that would have been through the title block tutorial. And I'm ready to put my shapes into here and begin to dimension them. So let's do that. So I'm going to start with I'm gonna base. And I'm going to need to find my file, my first part that I want to put in. So I'll hit this little guy right here. And I got my puzzle cube. And you guys are going to want to go through again find your name again it'll say Polina here and mine's gonna be a little deeper than your guys's but essentially you will have a folder and your IED folder called puzzle cube which should have all of your parts and all of everything you've done so far for the puzzle cube should be saved in here so I'm going to open up blue and you can see right away it gives me blue now I can place this in here this is my front view it asks me assumes I want to do my front view first if for some reason this wasn't my front view I could change it to top uh, back uh, ISO right or so forth whatever I wanted to get started but it is my front view so I do want to put it in there and I'm going to try and put it in here somewhere uh, so it fits in the center of my drawing when I have all four of my shapes in here and you'll see what I mean in one second so I place that guy and now it changes from base to projected and it wants to put the rest of the orthographic views in. So I put in my top view where it's going to be placed. Again, making sure they're all centered. There's my right view. Give myself room to dimension. And then isometric will go up here. And when I'm done, I can right click and I'll go create. There we go. That should be my orthographic projection with an isometric. Now, if I go over here to my isometric and I get this little red dotted line around it and I double click on it, I can pull up the editing drawing view and I want to actually give this guy a color. So over here is the different styles and I want to do the shaded style for that guy. And I'll hit OK. And just that guy. The rest of these you don't want to color, but the isometric it helps us see better when we do go ahead and color those. So the next trick is, oh, let's take a quick look, look at my title block. Notice with my title block that everything has come in here. My name, because I'm the one who created it, uh, the drawing name, the date uh, it was created, is what the date is using there, and sheet one. Notice how these are all centered in here. Notice how none of them are coming out of the lines that, or the accepted square. That is how that should look. That is a good looking title block. So if there are any problems with this and you do need to fix it, you can always go back in to your drawing resources over here. You can go back to your title block. Your title block should have a name that's yours. Double click on the icon. Active sheet. Oh, I'm sorry, don't double click on that. Right click over here. Edit. And that will bring up the editing for yourself. Anything you do edits you make, therefore will change uh, into the title block that we have. Again, you want to make sure your boxes, when you look at hover them are in the area that they're supposed to be in, that your title is centered. If I need to change that, I could right click and I can go edit text. Here's the center tool and all that stuff can be changed. But I'm not going to make any changes because I did a good job the first time. So I'm actually just going to go finish sketch, save changes, no. And we're back to here. Okay. So I need to do my dimensions now. So I'm going to go over to annotate and I'll use the dimension tool and dimension should be pretty simple I just want to pull these guys out click on this line pull it out gives you little stopping points which are nice again you want to put your bigger dimensions on the outside remember that so I'm going to give myself a little room okay and it brings up this thing do you want to edit anything or so forth I don't want to and I don't really want to see this again so I'm going to uncheck this box and I'm going to go okay and then I'm continue dimensioning Again, it gives you stopping points. These should be lined up with each other, so that is perfect. Okay, 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to do the width dimension. Again, this one should line up with that. And I'm going to do an overall dimension here, like so. And I think all that's left is I need to do a dimension something like this. And again, you gotta you gotta break a rule here. I understand and draw across your shape, but it is the lesser of two evils rather than dimensioning off of a hidden line. So I put that guy in there. And I think that guy now is fully dimensioned. Remember the dimensioning guidelines, don't over dimension, don't under dimension, and try to follow those rules. Go back to your notes that you've taken on that or the PowerPoint if you need to review that. So that should be sheet one. And then I would go over here, I would right click, I would go done, right click again, I'm gonna go new sheet, okay? And there is sheet two. I can then go back to place views, base, search. I'm gonna do my green guy this time, open. I'm gonna put him in there, put my projected views in. It's a lot easier than drawing orthographically by hand, right guys? Put those guys in, right click, create. Again, change the color. And then I would go ahead and dimension this, okay? Now I'm not gonna make you guys painstakingly watch me go ahead and do this whole thing, so I have one that's already mostly done. Let's pull this guy up. And I have five sheets, because I have five parts. I haven't gone through and dimensioned these, but oh, I have some, but not all of them. But let's pretend like I, they're all dimensioned and already to go. There's one uh, more thing I'd like you guys to do before you're done, and then if you're doing the extra credit, there's actually one more thing on top of that. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and create a new sheet here, and I'm going to put in base view, and I'm gonna search, and I'm gonna put in my assembly. Okay, mine's called the assembly yo. And I'm gonna go open. Now it wants to put in the front view, and I don't really care to see the front view. I don't need the full orthographic projection of this. Well, all I really want is an ISO. So something along that line right there, like that. Uh, I could also, if I wanted to, well, let's put it in here, okay? Press escape, because I don't need any other projections. Uh, let's move it around. I'm gonna double click on this again. Move this guy over here so I can look at my shape. I do want it colored, okay? And the scale might not be what I want. I might want it to be a little bigger. Let's see, you can play with it. I can go two to one. I can see how that looks. Uh, two to one's coming a little outside of my shape. So I better go back and change it back to one to one. And okay. But that's what I would like. Now, this sheet should actually be your first sheet. So right now it's sheet six, and I want it to be sheet number one. So I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna move it above sheet number one. Now it automatically changes to sheet number one, and it's in there. Now, if you are did the extra credit, the, the video uh, explosion, and there is a video tutorial to show you how to do that, and it is as credit, I'd like you to put that in there as well. So I'll go new sheet. Uh, I'm actually going to make this sheet number two, because I want it to come right after the isometric of your assembled project. I'm going to go base, I'm going to go find, and I'm going to find that presentation file I called mine explosion right there. Open. Again, I don't want the front view, I want an ISO, something along those lines. I want it all to fit in there, right? Great. Press escape. And I'm going to double click on here because I do want it colored like so. So that should be sheet two. So if you did the extra credit, you'll have seven sheets. If you did not do the extra credit, you'll have six sheets. This sheet right here, if I see this, when you guys turn this in, I will know to go check the Dropbox to see the video that you would have created for the extra credit assignment. Uh, when you are all done with this, what you're gonna do, and everything looks really good, you're gonna go over here and you're gonna pull down print. Okay, you're going to select your printer. Your printer should be number 10. You're going to go all sheets because you want to print them all. Okay, and you're going to go preview. And once I've done that, I can then go through, you know, next page, next page. I can make sure everything looks right, everything's looking snazzy. Again, we're pretending like I did dimension these. Next page, these should all be dimensioned for you guys. Next page, and that should be all of it. And then I can go close. 
and then go back and I would go ahead and print. I'm not gonna print these, but that's what you guys would do. And then you will staple this in order to your grade sheet that you guys have been using up until now. There's a part for the extra credit and there's a part for your dimension sheets and that's how you guys will turn it in. All right guys, enjoy.